In today's video, I'm having a look at Gilead Sciences Incorporated, having a look at the US unemployment claims, and I'm gonna have a little bit of a talk about the energy sector and what some of my thoughts are about it. Hello and welcome to another ACY Securities Market Update. My name is Alastair Schultz and I'm going to be a host through today's trading journey. To start things off, I always give a COVID-19 update. At the moment, we have nearly 2.7 million infections globally. We've seen 190,000 deaths and we are starting to see those recoveries rise with close to 740,000 people recovered so far. Hopefully this means or indicates that we might see more recoveries on the way and that might even indicate that we could start looking at an easing of lockdown measures that are currently going across the globe. Gilead Sciences Incorporated has been a drug in the media a lot quite recently. They have been a business that have been producing a COVID-19 drug that might help towards the recovery of patients. It is worth noting that it is not a vaccine but it has been something they've been trialing and trying to see if it will work to help people recover greater or better from COVID-19. Unfortunately, the clinical trials and a leaked report about it have not gone to plan. They've shown ill effect or nil effect really in reality. And so therefore their stock price has taken a bit of a tumble, almost a bit over 4.3%. So that has obviously led to the idea on this race to try and find a COVID-19 drug with an idea to look towards the next companies that are on the way to trying to make it and are trying to push towards getting their clinical trials. Chances are the stock prices on some of these companies are, when they fail are also going to come down if they do fail. But hopefully they don't and we do start seeing results and we can get a mass manufactured drug out to the public quite quickly and easily. The next thing to sort of consider today is the US unemployment situation. We've seen unemployment rates rise again. We've seen the figures for unemployment claims rise overnight, and it has been pretty dramatic over the last sort of five weeks. The first week we saw 3.28 million. The following week we saw 6.6. .6. The week after that, 6.6. .6. Then we saw 5.25, and now we're seeing 4.5 million. So whilst it may look like we're seeing a peak of unemployment claims and it is starting to trend down again, the fact remains that these figures are still in the millions on a weekly basis. We're now looking at nearly 26.5 million people that have gone for unemployment benefits. Now, making the assumption that all of these people applying have lost their jobs and are currently unemployed, that puts the figure for the entire workforce of America being at an unemployment rate well above 20%. The scary worrying part really is that if we do see more spread of the virus in the US, which is now really the epicenter of infections, that these numbers could continue to rise. Putting that into consideration on what happened during 2009, the unemployment rate seen then during the GFC, we see 10%. So it's already dwarfed that figure. And we're starting to see a very close similarity to what has happened during the Great Depression, especially from an unemployment claims type of perspective. So definitely something to consider moving forward and what we might see out of the unemployment situation and where we might see growth in the future once COVID-19 comes in. Now, the thoughts that I have about the energy sector are all really relating to oil. And I have two ways of thought at the moment. The first side of things is looking at the idea that, okay, whilst oil has gone to negative territory on the futures market, we are seeing some very cheap prices and we've had such a really good recovery really from an environmental impact of businesses shutting down. Now, naturally, you will think about a lot of the stuff that we do in to try and keep environmentally friendly for the earth. We have stuff like where we shut down all our, the global health day, where we shut down all electricity for one, for one hour or a, cut or a day or so. And there are a variety of other areas where we look for that. And it's all about being sort of preventative measures. And we have seen a push towards wanting to do lockdowns and shutdowns like we're seeing now, now for manufacturing to try and combat the pollution and combat some of those environmental factors that we are starting to see a rapid rise in. Naturally, we've had COVID-19 occur and this sort of an experiment which has been being pushed for has kind of just happened naturally. So we have seen a massive reduction in environmental factors across the globe. Now, the interesting part when it comes to oil and energy and fossil fuels is that there are really two trains of thought that I have. On one side of the spectrum, I'm looking at the idea that perhaps this situation will put a push towards more interest in investing in uh, renewable energy sources and that we might start seeing a rise in those sort of companies. So things like Tesla and renewable energy sort of solar panel manufacturers and a variety of other methods that we could look at. Now, the other side of this that I look at is that the oil prices are so low 
that it is really cheap and an efficiently priced market item that would allow for energy to continue to be used via oil streams. As opposed to it becoming so expensive and then putting a comparison that, you know, oh well now we have energy sectors that are cheaper and or getting to a, on a renewable side, cheaper and close to the oil prices. We've just had oil drop in price so much so that it makes it less incentivized for us to actually be using the normal renew or the new renewable sources as opposed to it's so much cheaper, we might as well just keep producing it that way. So this really could go in either direction when it comes to energy providers. It could go in either direction when we think about the investment into renewable energies and the companies and stocks behind them. So one of the first places that I think come to mind is Citigroup. Citigroup has already said that by 2030 they want to basically eliminate all financial services for fossil fuel related businesses and companies. Naturally if we start seeing a push towards that side then I'm going to fall on the, the renewable energy sector. If that doesn't happen to a much greater number of companies around the globe, then I'm going to be leaning towards people who are going to start using oil in large masses again, just like we were before COVID-19. Now for tonight, we've got a bit of news coming up ahead. The things that I've marked up here on the chart that you'll be able to see on your screen, hopefully right about now, are looking at UK retail sales, the German IFO business surveys, and US durable goods orders. They really are the only high impact events that I'm seeing for tonight. The remainder of the stuff is really considered to be low impact, but considering it's a Friday, we may not get a huge amount of trading action considering what we've seen last night, unless there is some un unscheduled news release that might contain more information about drugs for COVID-19, or perhaps even vaccines, and maybe some oil-related news. So keep an eye on what's going on. We are getting a lot of unscheduled releases and news reports that are occurring throughout the weeks and it is all usually related around COVID-19. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, feel free to like and subscribe or even leave a comment in there for me so that I can get some feedback. And of course, if you have any questions other than just leaving a comment in this video, feel free to send me an email at talktoal at acy.com. And I hope that you all have a great trading day ahead.